I've been having a lot of fun trying out the new extra large ink tense blocks. And if I had to describe them in one word, I would describe these as versatile. You can draw with them, you can paint with them, you can use them wet, you can use them dry. So it's a really good medium for just enjoying um, doing things quite spontaneously and getting lots of colour in. So I've tried them in different ways. I've used them, like I said, dry, wet and on different surfaces. I've used them on canvas as well. So these are just some quick ideas that I did. I did some artist copies. I didn't do any drawing beforehand. I just went straight in and did them just to see how these ink tents worked. And it was a lovely surprise to get these as a gift from Derwent. So this video is not sponsored at all by Derwent. It's completely impartial. So I'll tell you exactly what I think about them, although I do love them. Um, but they were a gift. So I will have to just, you know, just wanted to say that, that I was gifted the tin from Derwent, which was very nice. To begin with, we'll just have a look at what's in the tin and we'll have a look at the colours. The colours are similar colours to the ones that you get in the ordinary size blocks. Um, and they do say on them what they are. I will tell you in a moment that they don't because my eyes are going and I hadn't noticed it, but I do correct that later on. So what I'll do is I'll just talk very quickly about them and what I'm doing with them. And then at the end of the video, I'll put the full kind of length of each of the um, artworks that I did with the materials that I use, because I used a little bit of ink and things as well. And also with the paper that I use, because like I said, they're so versatile, you can use them on different papers. And I tried them on canvas as well, which I really liked because the tooth of the canvas came through and you got that texture there. For those of you that are new to ink tents, one of the great advantages of it is it's permanent once you put the layers on and once they're dry, they're permanent and you can layer them up and intensify that colour um, and you can mix the colours by doing that as well. So, you know, if you put your blue on top of your yellow, once your yellow's dried, you're going to get a green. So you can layer things up and build the intensity in your paintings. I didn't do that too much because I did very quick, immediate drawings, um, but you can do that and I will show you that on the chart as well. For those of you that are used to working with ink tents that either have the pencils or the ordinary blocks, these are just the same formula um, and the same colours that you can get. So really you'll know how to use them, use them in the same way. One big advantage I feel that the extra large blocks have over the ordinary blocks is that they don't snap. Um, I work quite quickly, I'm quite expressive, I tend to you know, get carried away and absorbed in what I'm doing and don't think too much about my materials. Um, and then I end up snapping things because I'm, I'm rushing. So with these big chunky ones, they're not going to snap the same. And of course you're getting a lot more colour in them. They're going to last a long time. My ordinary ones have lasted very well, um, but these extra large ones are obviously going to last a lot, lot longer. And you can get quite a fine line. It's not going to be a really delicate line, you know, if we're doing a delicate drawing. But if you use the corners of them or the edges of them, and you can use a little brush as well, of course. So you can get some, you can get that difference between some very fine drawing and painting to being very expressive and using the whole side of the block to cover a big piece of paper in a very short period of time. Okay, so I'm piffling on a little bit now. I just wanted to tell you about them. Um, I will link these down below in the description. This uh, video might be a little bit disjointed because I've um, been videoing on different days in between other jobs. I'm a little bit busy at the moment with new galleries and exhibitions and things with my own work, but you can see more of that on Instagram um, if you want to follow me on there. Just one very minor criticism I'd like to make about these is the fact that it calls them large watercolour ink blocks. Um, I think it would be better just to say they're ink tents um, and for us just to treat them as a completely different medium and, and just get to know them as they are. I think using the word watercolour, they don't act like watercolours and I think if, if you were a beginner, um, it wouldn't help build your confidence up thinking that these were watercolours and that, and that they were going to react in the same way that watercolours do. So that's just one little criticism um, and, you know, and that's, that's perfectly fine if that's what they want to call them. I personally wouldn't and if I was you when you're buying them, when you're using them, just think of them as their own medium. Don't compare them to watercolour or to acrylic or to oil or to anything else that you're using. Just enjoy them for what they are and what they can do as a completely different separate medium. When I get the time I will come back and use these again and do something different. I rather enjoyed doing the artist copies. I did a Toulouse Lautrec and what was the other one I did? I can't just remember but I'll put all the names and all the information in the captions underneath um, the videos as they go along and I'll pop some music on for you as well. So I'll just want to conclude really by saying a very very big thank you to Derwent for sending me this set. It was a much appreciated gift. Um, I'll put some of these into some shorts as well, some of the um, 
you know, details of the sketches and things. Okay, so if you've just bought some or if you're planning on getting some, I hope you enjoy using your Derwent Ink Tents um, as much as I do. And uh, let me know, let me see what you think about them, put it in the comments below. Um, and if you've already done some work, if you tag your work in Instagram with my um, Instagram, which is Callie Lawson Art, um, I can tell you what I think of your work and have a look at it, which is rather nice. I'd like to have a look at what you're doing too. Okay, so enjoy the rest of the video. I'll carry on talking through. Like I said, I've done videos over different days, different stages, doing the, um, just, you know, just testing in, in different ways, dry, wet, everything. Okay, so thank you very much for watching and I'll be back again soon. Before we go ahead and try out Derwent's new XL Inktense blocks, I'm just going to talk about my first impressions when I opened the tin. As you saw there, there was a nice piece of cellophane that went across in between the tin and the lid, so that while they're in transit, while they're in the post, they're not getting bashed around and the colours mixing together, etc., because they're behind that cellophane, so that was nice. And then when we look inside the tin, this is actually foam, you can see there my thumb indenting that. So for storing them, um, and this is a bit foamy as well, so for storing them, that's nice and soft for them and if you tip the box over they're just going to be hitting that foam. So before anything else we'll just have a quick look at what it says on the outside of the tin. So we've got 12 large watercolour ink blocks, um, so various colours there and we'll have a look at the colours in a moment and it says water solub soluble vibrant colours that dry permanently so that's one thing to remember that's one of the things I really like about the ink tents for exceptional layering. Draw, paint, cut or grate. Now this is another reason why I love them. If you look at my style of work, I love both drawing and painting and I often draw on top of my paintings. Um, so drawing and painting together using one medium is a plus for me. So if we turn it over and have a look here, it probably says pretty much the same thing. Versatile water soluble ink like formulation um, with vivid pigments. So the lovely bright colours offering exceptional layering. So it mentions that again, so that's one thing we need to remember is they dry permanently and then we can build them up and get that intensity of colour. Okay, so let's have a look at the colours that we've got in here. So I don't think it actually says anywhere what the names of the colours are. I'm just having a quick look. It's just got a code there of the colours that there are and it says times eight. So we know we've got eight colours but it doesn't actually name the colours anywhere on the tin as far as I can quickly see. So let's have a look. So I do have the colours written down somewhere of my other tin, um, so we'll, you know, we'll compare them later. But let's have a look. So we've got a nice bright yellow, very cadmium me. We've got an orange, a red. Um, this is a lovely colour. Does it actually say on them? Let's have a look. So it's got the number stamped there, so you can go on to the website and have a look. Um, so it's 0700, so it's got the number stamp, so not the actual colour, so we can soon look that up. That's, look at that, isn't that beautiful? Like a magenta. Okay, so we've got um, a purple violet, we've got a blue, so we've got three nice primaries um, there that we can make more or less any colour with, obviously. We've got the white, um, in the other one I don't use the white that often, but we'll give it a try. We've got black, obviously very handy, handy for drawing. This is a nice colour, it's almost navy really. So another nice dark blue. Um, this will be a very handy colour for things like landscapes. And then we've got two greens. This one's rather a, a bright green. And again, it depends what you're going to be doing. It depends on your style, how you want to use them. So for me, if I was doing a landscape, I'd probably add a little bit of red to that green to just knock it back a bit. But for something else, um, you might want it that bright. Okay, so I'll go ahead and have a go using different techniques. So they're both drawing and painting, so we're going to use them both ways of doing a few different subjects and different techniques and see how we go on. Um, presumably they'll work in the same way as the smaller, thinner ones, but the, because they're so big, you're going to be able to use the side to cover really quickly a, a large area of paper. You can use the edge, obviously, to draw with. So they're perhaps going to be a little bit more versatile than the, uh, than the smaller ones. Okay, so we'll go ahead now and do some uh, different painting with them.
Now my apologies, the eagle eyed amongst you might notice that I really need my glasses on today because it does in fact say the name um, of the colour there but it's quite small. Now it's a very good idea to take a note of that because once you start using them that's going to soon wear off and the code number's going to soon wear off. So if you go on Derwent's website, I believe um, it's a while since I did it, but if you go on Derwent's website you can get the codes of the different colours so you know which colours are available and you know which one you've run out of if you run out of a colour. So it's a good idea to make a chart before you start using them and you start wearing those um, marks down. It's very difficult actually to read on there. See that one says fuchsia, um, but some of them are already quite difficult to read even before we started using them and it would help if I got my eyes tested. So that's an age thing. So here we go. So what I'm going to do is just use the corner to do a little line next to where I've written down the colours and some of these are the same colours that I've got in the other tin um, of the ordinary ink tents that I've had for a while that you'll have seen me use here on YouTube. So poppy red, like I said I really like this fuchsia one, beautiful colour and deep violet bright blue if you wanted to you could add some water and you could paint the colours on um, I'm just doing a little line field green leaf green that's a nice green I think that's similar I use that one a lot in the other set so mustard which is kind of an ochre colour really and this one that I said looked like navy is actually the Payne's grey but quite a blue grey and then we've got black and obviously the white's not going to show up, but we'll do it anyway. Shows up a little bit. Okay, so pop them back in straight. So again, my apologies, I didn't have my glasses on and I can see now that it does have it written there. So very handy to have, but do make a chart because like I say, they will wear off. This was just to show how good these are at layering and of course you could go on allowing them to dry and building up and building up and putting more. So what I did was I did a stripe of each colour, let it completely dry and then I came back on the top again just to show you how you can layer these colours up. Now in the process of doing that you'll see that it gives us a chance to have a little bit more of a close look at the colours and how some of them are much more granular than others. So the green here which was the field green um, and the violet and the fuchsia and actually a little bit of the orange as well you can see how they've granulated quite a lot and actually the paint's grey as well if you look over here you can see how it's granulated um, and this actually depends a little bit on how much water you add uh, you'll see I just let the brush run out of water as I went along and to make it you know a fair comparison I did exactly the same I did three strokes of each colour before I put it on so we've got exactly the same amount of water and pigment on there with all of the colours and you can see how the yellow one um, and the red one are perhaps the most vibrant of the colours and what I really really like about this yellow and I've used it a lot in my other set is if you if you feel like your painting's a little bit dull and you want to bring some light back perhaps in the foreground of a landscape then popping the yellow over the top of the other colours can really freshen and brighten that up it's a lovely colour for going over the top with um, and you can see it's made a lot of different colours um, and you can still see so you could perhaps do a drawing underneath with these colours the purple and the fuchsia here um, and then you can see the yellow over top just giving it that extra layer but then you see the drawing underneath and the same here you can still see those lines underneath um, with that yellow on the top and you can have a bit of a practice with this um, I'll just get my brush and we'll do another colour over the top I'm not sure which one we'll go for we'll go for the fuchsia since it's so lovely so again load your brush up and go straight the way across and allow it to run out I did go back again from the other end so we've got a nice intense stripe there and you'll see here straight away it's granulating as I said that's a granulating colour um, but you can still see those lines and those layers of colour underneath. So you can see how this is going to have a lot of applications. So if you don't like the granulation, um, 
be careful about how much water you use, don't use perhaps so much water, um, but it actually can be very handy, it can be handy to get that texture uh, a little bit of interest. I really think Derwent ink tents lend themselves to being a little bit more expressive, perhaps a bit more abstract, impressionistic, rather than realistic, um, but that's just my style. It depends on what you could do, whatever you want with yours, but I feel they lend themselves to that, so I really don't worry about this granulation. I think it all adds to it and makes it more interesting. Okay, and of course that's permanent colour once it's dry and that's completely dry there. So you can do whatever you want over the top there. You can do some drawing um, over the top of those colours and make a nice clear line. I went over these again, dry onto dry, so this is completely dried and then I put the blocks on top. Just again we've got that lovely texture and that depth of colour and the colours building up all the time and it nice and bright and intense colour. But one thing I did want to say was while I noticed while I was doing that was because I'm quite a messy worker and because I work quite quickly and I'm, I'm not always thinking what I'm doing with my materials because I'm concentrating on what I'm doing over here, is when I've put these back in here wet, um, they've not dried out very quickly, there's a little puddle under there. So what I would suggest you do while you're actually working is perhaps keep them like that. So, you know, I went on here with this one and it was still wet on the end. Um, and I'm soon messing this up, so perhaps that's a good way to keep them, would be whilst you're actually working this is obviously. Um, and then that's going to make them easier to get hold of each time as well as you're going from one colour to the next. I got a bit messy, can you see how I've got some blue on the top of that? If you want to clean them off, just get a nice uh, clean brush and just do a sweep across, or a couple of sweeps in the, this case, and get that colour off to get back to the colour below. So you can soon clean them if you've been a little bit on the messy side. Like I say, I think some of these are very damp, so I don't think we should put the lid back on whilst we're damp. I think it's probably a good idea to keep them like that while you're working, let them dry before you pop the lid back on. Just a little heartbreak and heartbreak fades with 
Just couldn't 